I hope you are all doing great and today we will be talking about the uh, tools and tips and tricks that you can use to maximize your returns on the sideways market and as well as on the uptrend. So I will talk specifically on what are the trade configurations that you can use on the sideways market when basically the market is in the directionless stage and is moving within the horizontal trading range. And what are the strategies that you can use on the uptrend when the price is making you higher highs? So what are the tools that you can use to make sure that you always participate in the market, even if you are away from your computer? So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dmitry. I'm the portfolio manager trader. And together with BeatScap, we are working on the automation, how to uh, let you guys improve your performance using tools that we create and develop on a constantly basis. And basically the tools that you can use to stress test any strategy before risking your real money. So today I want to focus, as I already mentioned, on the strategies that you can use on the different market phases and I did not cover a lot about the amount of greed levels that you can set and what is basically the best strategy to set uh, high frequency configuration where you have greed levels above 60 and when it really makes sense to have fewer greed levels like 40 or 50 so we will cover all of these configurations as well as the exit strategies and the risk management principles that you should follow. So the biggest advantage of basically automation is that it is indifferent towards the current price. So in manual trading, you are always worried about the price that the crypto will reach tomorrow or day after tomorrow so you are trying to basically predict the price so that you are able to exit the market with the highest sell point as possible but in reality you can only predict the direction but you never can predict the exact price the crypto is going to trade tomorrow yeah so you can buy let's say at this level and then you see the price moving higher you are now aware that it is best time to sell the crypto. So you sell the crypto, you lock in the profit of 3,500. But eventually what happens? Um, as you expected, it's going to fall. But in reality, it went even higher. So this is your missed opportunity here. So you would have earned $9,000 if you would have waited a bit more. So that's the point. That's the tricky thing here. You never know when the market is going to reach the uh, highest price point before it falls, right? Whereas in case of the automation, it's, it's really the cool thing about automation is that it, it basically trades the market regardless of the uh, price direction. So it can generate returns on the rising market, on the falling market, and of course on the sideways market. So it always finds these micro trade opportunities to uh, generate returns for you on a daily basis. So for some traders and investors, that's exactly that you are looking for, is to make sure that you have a steady uh, daily profit inflow to your pocket, all right? So in automation, you have what is called realized return, okay? so. Let's now open the main page. So once you log in and you go to the bot section, as the one I have right now, you will see that you, here you have the uh, chart itself where you can conduct your technical analysis. So all the tools are available here. And on the right side, you have what I call the decision-making board where you can 
choose the strategy, the exchange that you want to trade, and the crypto pair that is available on this particular cryptocurrency exchange, the investment allocation that you want to allocate to this uh, concrete strategy, and you can always change the amount you want to invest just by using this simple uh, point here and some other tools like the trading up take profit stop loss which i will explain to you later today so stay with me below you have the uh, layout where you have all of the active strategies right and you can see exactly what is the investment you allocated to each strategy so for example theta to trading bitcoin my allocation was 0 0.027 bitcoins and so far, it has managed to generate 30% to my initial investment, all right? So that's the key number you are looking at. That's the key metric for you. And you are only interested in this one because it not only takes into account the profit generated by the bot, like let, let's just click on Theta, for example. And I will show you all the micro trades that it has successfully executed. So you see all these green and red circles on the chart, they represent buy and sell orders executed by the bot. So these are micro trade uh, executions, all right? And that's why the bot has managed to make so far for the period of just one month, uh, $400, which is approximately 30% to my initial investment, which is a pretty impressive result for a period of just 28 days, right? So if you annualize this return, that's gonna be around three, uh, 350%, right? And yeah, that's actually something that traders and investors are looking for. Like even a 30% of an annual return is a pretty satisfying number, but you see here it's just for the period of one month, it's managed to make 30% already. So that's pretty impressive for sure. Uh, what we've changed here is that now you have this metric that shows you the average daily return generated on each strategy. So you see some have 1%, some have 3%. So at least you can use these metrics to compare different strategies with one another to see which uh, configuration works the best all right so let's first uh, start with the uh, strategies that we have so on the right side uh, first of all once you choose the crypto you want to trade either here let's say random one let it be uh, Cardano trading to USDT so the system automatically assigns the trading range for you so what you see here above, where you have the uh, red lines, these are sell limit orders, all right? So as soon as the price reaches this area, it's going to sell the crypto, the base currency. In this case, that's Cardano. And if the price falls, then it's going to buy the crypto. It's going to buy Cardano using USDT. With, as the price is moving lower, then it provides a better price to buy the uh, crypto from the market and this is basically how it works so in reality the process is pretty much a never lasting as far as the price stays within the trading range all right so once the bot executes the sell limit order let's say this one over here it's gonna take the cash out of the market because that's the sell order right so it's that means that we're gonna take the usdt out of the market because we sell cardano and the portion of this usdt goes to your balance as a profit and another stake uh, is going to be used to plot a new buy limit order somewhere around this area so that later if the price falls to that point it's gonna buy crypto again so that's why this is an, basically a everlasting process. And that's why you see that some strategies so far managed to make 
8,000 trades. So that's for the period of three months. Okay. Some managed to make 4,000 for the period of just one month. So that uh, strictly depends on the volatility of the crypto. So if the volatility is uh, intense, then for sure, this provides lots of opportunities for the board to uh, buy low and sell high on these market swings. And, and of course, it also depends on the configuration that you set. So the more grid levels you, you plot, uh, the, the narrower is your trading configuration. So basically, the closer is the, this, this, like, the location. Basically, the closer your grid levels are located to each other. All right, so that means that even more transactions will be executed by the bot. All right, so we have the classic bot and the S bot. Basically, the S bot is the one that originated from the classic bot, and the primary aim of the S bot is to generate maximized returns on the sideways market. So, what I mean by the sideways market is this one. So you know that there are four different market phases on the market. That's the accumulation before the rally or before the breakdown. Um, after the advancing phase, usually what you will say is the distribution. So that's basically when uh, those generated returns on the advancing phase, they are now fixing their returns. So that means that they are selling and that's why you see this downside pressure on the market so eventually if buyers are no longer interested to push the market higher what you will see most likely is that the price is going to decline for some time okay so that there are many factors that can affect the market price these are fundamental and the technical factors that affect the market but that's the general uh, interpretation of the market so for the s board what we are looking for is for the accumulation phase as you see the sideways market formation and the distribution phase also sideways market formation and the way you can um, configure your bot is by using some patterns that you can recognize on the market. So, for example, you made your you made a sound research, and now you expect the market to stay in the distribution phase. So that's the sideways formation. And on this sideways formation, which pretty much looks like this, you see the price bounces off the support and resistance line, and that's where you can take advantage of this pattern. So you can enter the market somewhere in between. Once you see the price successfully bounces off the support, and the configuration may look like this. And you set the stop loss below the support line just to ensure that you have the full control over your funds and that if the, if the pattern fails, basically if the support line does not sustain, then at least you have this sell um, stop loss order to to cover you okay so this is a configuration that you can use once you expect the market to continue this sideways uh, movement so that's the distribution phase right and that's the accumulation phase okay so depending on the crypto that you analyze they can be in different market stages. So make sure you fully understand how to determine market phases and you can take advantage of using different patterns that will tell you if the market is in the sideways or in the advancing mode. So for example, what is typical for the advancing mode? And for the advancing, we stick with the classic configuration because, because the classic board distributes your investments so that it always buys and sells the same amount of crypto. So imagine if the price goes higher, that means that the price appreciates 
and now in order to buy the same amount of crypto that it used to buy before at lower levels it has to spend more investment right so that's why in case of the classic bot when the price is moving higher then you basically increase your uh, stake in the basically increase your risk exposure because now you uh, have more base currency whereas in case of the as bot uh, it it just spends the same amount of investment to reach the level so of course if the price appreciates now in order to buy crypto with the same amount it used to buy it let's say let's say it always spends ten dollars okay so that means that when the price moves higher now you can buy fewer coins and that's why as it goes higher you buy fewer coins and that's why your risk exposure here is limited in case of the asbot so that's why it turns out that the asbot is optimal for the sideways market whereas the classic bot is optimal for the rising market so here's the example actually for you you see that's the sideways phase and that was basic attention token trading to usdt and that's the result for the asbot it was three percent for the period of 13 days and the same period the same date range the same market phase but with the classic bot in this case only two percent so clearly what we see here is that on the sideways formation as both outstrips the classic bot all right whereas in case of the where's this example that i have in the in case if the market is rising what you will see is that the classic bot significantly outstrips the as bot because as i said earlier when the price goes higher then it it's it, it buys basically it increases your risk exposure whereas as bot always spends the same amount of investment so that's why for the as bot when the price goes higher it buys fewer coins whereas in case of the classic bot it always buys the same amount of crypto so that's why on the rising market you have a bigger risk exposure in the classic configuration so that's why you see here the same period for xrp usdt but classic generated 70 percent whereas asbot generated only 53 percent so that's the tool i'm using here is basically the backtest tool the one that you can find here it says backtest so you can set any amount of grid levels and you can backtest this strategy for any period but the maximum period is just one month so you see i'm now able to backtest this strategy to basically to see um, what would be the performance of my bot if i would have launched it one month ago so from the 12th of february until the 11th of no actually 12th of january until today so the result would be let's see it would be nine percent okay and you see exactly at which price it would purchase and at which price it would sell the crypto so everything is fully transparent you can backtest any strategy to see if this crypto in this case that's cardano to usdt works for you so are you satisfied with this return and are you satisfied with the market volatility of around in this case that's 200 percent but it's not something that you see every month right but still uh, you can use all the tools that you have here to see what is the upside potential during this period and what was the downside potential so at least you can use this as a benchmark to project what would like possibly be the uh volatility for the next month so you, you just you just look for the patterns on the market and if you see that for example for cardana it usually moves let's say 15 percent intraday and it falls intraday also somewhere around 15 percent then you can project that in the future it's going to move somewhere in this range as well so you must ask yourself can you tolerate the risk of 
the price of the crypto falling by 15% one day and rising 15% next day. So if you can handle this risk, then in this case, you can stick with Cardano. If not, then just go and look what other cryptos can offer you just using the backtest tool. And the cool thing about the backtest tool is that you can compare uh, different configurations with one another. And most importantly, you can compare the same configuration on different cryptocurrencies to see the results and compare them to find your best crypto you want to, to stick with. Okay, just using the backtest tool. So everything is here, full integrity and all the metrics that you need to figure out if this is something you want to trade or you'd rather find another better one option for you. So, so once you decided which strategy you want to stick to, and let's say from the current price, I expect the market to, to start moving in this sideways, so like, like this, okay? So that's why I know that SBOT is perfect for the sideways, so that's why I choose SBOT. And now is the time to figure out what is the amount of grid levels that I want to plot. So the, as, like, the simplest way for you to define the amount of grid levels to use, like the best, maybe it's not the best one, but one of the most optimal ones, is you can use this tool, which is the uh, price range. And you, and you just move it from the lower price up to the upper price. So that means that here you expect the range of around 90%. So if I plot around 70 grid levels, that's going to be around 1% of a return per each grid level. So that means that grid levels are located uh, from each other by 0.91%. So the difference between your grid levels is 0.91%. And by the way, it takes into account the fee that you have to pay. So in reality, it's around 1%, but since you have to pay the fee, that's why it's 0.91 already. So we calculate this for you uh, so that all the returns that you see here, you see the bot profit, that's the net, like, that's the net profit net of all fees. You can check this out here. Field orders, you see, fees, they are already priced in. So the profit you see, it's net of all fees. So that's another cool thing that we have at BitGap is that here is, once again, full transparency and information, like the return generated, is exactly what you will see on your balance as you go and open your Binance account, for example. So uh, that's, like, the, the rule you can use. Like, you see, the volatility you expect, like the range is 90%, then set around 70 or 80 grid levels if you want your uh, grid return to be around 1%, all right? So that's the general rule for you to apply. Let's use another one. Let's say late trading to Bitcoin. So what I see here, okay, so let's, now let's actually choose another one which has a, longer track record so that's one the one here it actually looks pretty okay that's xvg trading to ethereum so let's zoom out the chart a bit let's change the time frame to two hours yeah so you see it, it pretty much is moving in this sideways market let's see what is the volatility like the the, the price range you see it's around 90 percent so for this one, if you want to have around 1% of a return for each grid execution, then that's going to be around 70 grid levels as well. You see, it's around 1%. So if you put it in fewer, 68, then you see like almost exactly 1%. So that's how you can use it. What you also have to remember is that if you drag your lower price, let's say to that point, you see now you've reduced the amount of buy limit orders. So that's why now you need to allocate fewer of the cold currency. Whereas the more goes to the sell side. 
the same applies to the upper price if you drag it lower and you basically reduce the range of your sell side and that's why you see now fewer of the base currency is required to initiate this bot all right so that's the way you can use this uh, tool the one i have here which is price range you define the the volatility of your range that's for example here it's 26 percent if you want to have a one percent then it's going to be around 20 actually see it's actually 18 25 yeah 25 grid levels you see so somewhat close to this percent uh, why not exactly 26 even though we see that the volatility is 26 percent that's because once again the fee you have to pay is already priced in so that's why you set fewer grid levels to make sure it's one percent uh, yeah so that's regarding the amount of grid levels you set so once you define the trading range and the amount of grid levels you are ready to go now you see the investment that will be allocated you can make it lower but in case if you want let's say to plot 60 grid levels with the investment of only 368 usdt you will see that it's not enough to plot 60 grid levels because for each grid level there is a minimum investment uh, size which if i'm not mistaken on binance for most cryptos it's around 10 usdt so you see it requires more ethereum to plot all of these 60 levels within this trading range so what you can do if you still want to stick with the investment of 368 then just reduce the amount of grid levels for some reason it does not show me the button which is known as adjust grid quantity that's why i will refresh the page but still you can do it manually see 30 doesn't work 20 doesn't work so 10 works what about 15 doesn't work so you see that for this configuration you can only set 10 grid levels okay and that's let's actually refresh the page because it should actually show you the just by grid levels button here so let's choose let's say ftm to bitcoin oh come on yeah you see for example this one has 179 grid levels which for this amount of investment is too much then you adjust the grid quantity and now with this same investment you can plot 113 grid levels what happens if you increase the amount of grid levels let's say to 15 you see no longer possible because your investment is not enough so you just you see now you can launch it so drag the line and now you can start the bot okay the idea here is that since you have sell limit orders in order to sell something you must possess the base currency right so that's why if you don't have at your disposal this amount of FTMs, then it will require you to buy it with the market buy order. Okay, so like this. If I click on start, you see it asks me to buy the amount of FTMs required to plot all these sell limit orders. And you can say yes, or you can actually uh, spend less on fees just by going to trading. And here you can buy with the limit buy order. The required amount of FTM. Where is this FTM? So it was like around 5,000, right? So current price. So here you can buy it with a limit buy order in this case. But you remember that buying something or selling something with a limit order, this uh, spends less. That basically you have to spend less on fees. Whereas market orders, they are first priority orders. So that's why for this instant execution, you spend more fees. So let's go back to bots. Let's see what we have here. So there is a question. Uh, can you use the bot with Binance futures? And I have the answer for this one. Actually, we are about to launch a... Uh, 
second trading desk just for futures. So you can actually uh, initiate bots on futures as well. But that's something that is incoming in just a few weeks, I assume. But yeah, this, this is definitely something that you will soon be able to trade. And for that, we will have different webcasts where I will show you tips and tricks and what basically you have to do when trading futures bots because the algorithm that will be utilized there is, uh, is a bit different compared with the original one that we use here. So I will explain to you. So no worries, this is something that you will soon be able to trade. Okay, cool. Um, what else should I cover for today? So, yeah, we covered that in order to trade bots, with bots actually, you must define the market phase. So for the as bot is perfect, then you spot the distribution phase and the accumulation phase. And for the classic is perfect one is advancing, right? Of course, you don't want to trade on the declining market, but even on the declining market, if you were, let's say, unfortunate to predict the uh, price direction and the, the market started to move downwards instead of continue the rally, then even on the downfall, bots perform better than compared with an ordinary hodl strategy. So you see here, that's example. Just pay your attention to the chart at first. You see, imagine that you buy quantum here where you see HODL and then you just hold it, expecting the market to rally so that you will be able to fix some returns. But what happens is that it falls and now you are in minus 6.88% of a loss. Whereas if you would have launched the bot instead of just holding the crypto, then it would offset this downfall because you see it would have traded for you during this downfall and the, the profit generated would offset the total negative change of the base currency and that's why you would have only minus 3% compared with minus 6.88%. So even though of course on the downfall you will have a negative investment change because apparently the crypto falls, but still it's better than if you would just buy the crypto and hold it in your portfolio. Make sure that you stick with the proper strategy. And if you want to generate stable returns and to minimize the loss, then automation is something that you should consider because even on the downfall, it significantly uh, offsets, offsets the negative value change of the base currency. And what you see is that your investment change is only minus 3%, whereas it could be minus 7% always. So definitely, Automation wins over the simple HODL strategy. Let's see if we have some interesting questions popping out. So yeah, I mentioned exit strategies. So now let's go and cover these exit strategies. So we have five options for you to exit the market. Remember in the pattern setup that I demonstrated to you, this one, I have what is known as the stop loss, you see? So in case if the strategy does not sustain, if the support is, is broken, then you have the stop loss, which is the first exit strategy. In this case, the bot will exit the market by selling all of the base currency that got stuck in the strategy at the time the price reached the stop loss. And that's exactly what you can see over here. For example, for theta, do I have the stop loss? Yes, I do have it. So that's exactly at this price. So if the price falls from the current level to this level, then it will automatically sell all of the base currency, which you will see over here in details. And by that, uh, it ensures that you have a 100% exit from the market. Another exit strategy, what we have is this one it just cancels all of your open orders. So if you no longer want the bot to uh, execute trades, then you can cancel all open orders. 
by canceling all of the open orders, you do not get rid of your base currency. So it, it stays on your balance. So for example, Peter trading to Bitcoin, the one I have, you see I have 322 Petas. So if I close this bot with cancel all open orders, then in this case it will halt trading, but the amount of base currency is going to stay on my balance. So that means that I have to remember that I have Theta on my balance, which fluctuates every day. So the price can fall. That means that my value of my portfolio will fall. And if it goes higher, then it will appreciate. If you no longer want to be exposed to Theta price fluctuation, then make sure that right after you cancel all of the open orders, you just sell all of the theta or sell the amount that you want to get rid of. Okay, so that's the second strategy for you to consider that you can cancel the bot, but you can uh, leave some of the base currency on your balance. Okay, so the third option to exit the market is the take profit. So the take profit is basically when the investment change, that's the third column, reaches a specific um, percentage that you set, it will automatically close the bot and it will sell all, the, sell all of the base currency. So for example, theta trading to Bitcoin. Do I have the take profit? No, I don't. But here I can always set it. So let's say as soon as it reaches 40% it will automatically sell all of the base currency so right now it's 30% as soon as it reaches 40 it will just sell all the base currency and it will cancel all of the open orders in this case okay and another way for you to um, exit from the market let's refresh the page because it's for some reason a bit lagging the fourth option, well, actually, we covered four of them already. So that was the the uh, market sell. It was the cancel all open orders. That's the second one. The stop loss is number three. The number four is take profit. And number five is something that I'm not able to show you right now because that's the option that you have if you see your investment change in the negative side. So if you see minus, let's say minus 10%, then you get this third option to exit the market, which is the break even exit. So break even exit is basically the exit from the market with a 0% of a return, all right? So let's say you, you started trading somewhere at that point. So the price moved, and at that point over here, you entered the market. It started to fall drastically, okay? But still, the bot is trading for you. And now you are in the minus, in the negative zone. Let's say you are having a loss of minus 10% in total. So if you want to exit this trade, so you no longer believe it will rally significantly like this, then you can bet on that before continue the downfall it will swing back a, a, a bit and you can take advantage of this possible swing back because here is where exactly you can exit from the market with a zero percent of the return so the board will estimate at which price level you need well basically at which price level it reaches the zero percent of the return so if you don't want to bear a loss like what you can do is to hope for an option to exit with the zero percent and for that you must see the price to bounce off back basically to appreciate a bit so it automatically estimates the price of the break even where your investment is going to be zero percent but still it's kind of a risk because it will, might never reach this point of break even price where your investment is 0% and it may be that it will fall even further and you got stuck with your negative investment change so that's the option that you should consider 
if you expect the price to to bounce off back a bit before it continues the downfall and by having this expectation that it reverts back you have this chance of closing the board with a zero percent of the return all right so the system automatically estimates at which exact price the market should reach where you will get your investment of zero percent okay so these are five exit strategies that we have so far and depending on market conditions and the volatility stick with the right one okay so to maximize your returns that's going to be now in the topic of today's webcast we have this tool which is known as trading up so the cool thing about the trading up is that once the price breaches the uh, upper limit price which is over here you see the highest sell point if it if the price breaches it like this then in an ordinary scenario where you don't have the trading up instrument on the bot would halt trading right at that point so it won't continue trading for you as the price has breached the upper limit so whereas when you have the trading up on that means that your trading range which is right now over here it will follow the market and that's something that i can demonstrate to you right here so just quickly say initially your trading range is here lower upper limit prices imagine the price establishes new higher high so what's going to happen when you have your trailing up on then the trading range will follow the market like this imagine it, it goes higher again of, of course it will follow the rally as you have your trading up on but if the price falls from that point this is where the bot will not follow the downfall because that's why it's called trailing up as it only follows the market rally and in this case this is the area where you won't see the bot trading for you if the price comes back to the trading range this is where the bot will continue trading for you imagine the price makes new higher high of course the trading range will follow the market so basically this tool is the one I always use because it can be that when I am away from the computer or let's say I'm, I'm sleeping, it can be that at this time the price is moving like crazy upwards. And in order to ensure that I always participate in this rally, make sure to have this trailing up on because it follows the market rally. It just readjusts the trading range in accordance with the rally okay otherwise if you are not using the trading up what you might say is something that i have over here you see out of range ing trading to usdt see the status range it means it's no longer trading so let's see why it is no longer trading and here is why you see initially my trading range was over here so once the price breached the upper limit price it halted the trading because i did not have my trailing up on for this configuration you see i was lucky enough to to enter the market at the right time but it was a mistake to forget about the trading up because i missed this rally from one dollar up to 15 as of today you see this is a missed opportunity here okay so if you are not monitoring the market or you maybe you don't have time maybe you have another job to do and trading for you is just a hobby or or basically the activity that you have to uh, accumulate on your investments then you have this training up instrument to make sure that even when you are away from the laptop and you are not able to analyze the market, it will follow the rally if it breaks 
new higher high okay so of course for those who are monitoring the market on a daily basis you can just close the bot as soon as it breaches the upper limit price in order to open a new one with a new trading range the one that you want based on your preferences where you put basically where you set the upper price and lower price so in my case I prefer to stick with a upper limit price defined by the resistance and the lower limit price defined by the support all right so for example over here the support is in this area and resistance is well if to avoid this anomaly over here then it will be around this range uh, for example right now if you look at zero x training to use to see what you will spot is this triangle ascending pattern which basically means that neither bulls nor the bears are in control of the market so that means if we will see the breakout and the price moves higher from that point that's going to be an upward signal for us well it's like fr from the statistical standpoint most likely the rally will continue whereas it can be the case that it, that it breaks the ascending support line over here and this is going to be a bearish signal in that case okay so depending on the the tools that you use to find the best price to enter and exit the market set the configuration accordingly so from my experience it turns out that uh, looking for patterns on the market is the best way to find the best price to enter and the best price to exit the market so right now this looks like the uh, consolidation phase and once it breaks the resistance or the support this is where you can enter the market with the proper configuration so some strategies i provided you with for example this one that's for the rising market it's something that you can see you see the price respects the support line so once you see the price successfully bounces off the support again so you can enter at the breakout over here that's, you see that's the exact pattern formation that's known as free valleys pattern so this is where you can enter the market with this configuration at, at, at this point of breakout of the previous higher high so there are different ways for you to enter and exit the market just make sure that your uh, risk is justified so it, it, it makes no sense to enter the market where your risk is too high so for example here you see in this configuration my stop loss is quite close enough to my entry point so this is a pretty justifiable risk to enter the market okay because you see if it breaks the support then here I have my stop loss and I will not participate in the downfall further okay so always make sure that you stick with the basic risk management tools which is in this case the stop loss and to maximize your returns, make sure that you stick with the training up instrument. So let's see what are the questions that we have. So regarding the question of the trailing down, no, it's not the problem to implement this instrument. It's just that the decision of our IT department was that it like it makes more sense to have the training up rather than the training down because training down is a rather risky uh, tool to implement and that's why the decision was to stick with the training up but maybe this will change okay so that's something that is discussable all the time and and my it might be that in the future we will add okay so it, it's just that we take care of all of our customers regardless of the experience and in order to avoid uh, insane losses that you might incur uh, we, are, we have the trading up that's because it follows the market rally 
nobody actually wants to follow the downfall so that's why we don't have the trading down for now at least and if we will come up with the best configuration for the trading down then most likely we will add it okay so there are many things that we are constantly working on and implementing so yeah soon futures bots that's the brand new product and lots of things to discover in this new trading desk so yeah you will be able to trade on the downfall and on the uptrend because there are both long and short strategies that we will be implemented um, so can we set the stop loss by the percent well right now you can set the stop loss by the price and that's the only option here whereas in the trading you see that as we implemented new trading interface then you can set the stop loss based on the percentage over here and it will automatically calculate the trigger price in this case if you change the trigger price it will well actually 0 0.15 so yeah, you see it automatically estimates the percentage. So it works vice versa. It, it's now only possible here on the trading. Whereas in bots, it's only the price. But the cool thing here is that you can actually um, drag this stop loss just on the chart. So you see right now my stop loss is over here. Now I can drag the line and now my stop loss is going to be over here. So it, for me it's pretty convenient and makes me happy as I have all the things that I need to have on the chart that I can quickly drag. So you see if, if I see the price moving in the direction that I predicted, on, in this case that's the upside, then once I say it's moving higher, I can always drag the stop loss to to new, let's say to the new support line or somewhere around this area. So that's the cool thing that you have here is that you can drag the line every time. Yes, the thing is that the stop loss moves up with the trailing up always. So. I think I have some, no, actually not, not on my real account. But yeah, I used to have an open order, like an open strategy, and it had a trailing up on. So each time the price established new higher high, my stop loss moved alongside with the rally. So it turned out that I had to reallocate my stop loss uh, almost every day because. I, I, I mean, I stick with the stop loss below the support line. And as the price established new higher highs, it of course established new lower lows below which I tend to uh, set the stop loss. So it's, I mean, even though this is fully automated, we have all the tools for you to make sure the bots follow the market 24 seven. It, it really makes sense to check the activity at least three, day, three days per week just to uh, make sure that the stop loss is in the right place as in accordance with new market conditions and maybe it's time for you to launch new bots maybe it's time to close some bots so make sure to uh, open the desk at least three times a week that's something that I would recommend yeah so what else we should cover today so yeah let's just basically make a summary so what we learned today is that there are two strategies depending on the market phase that's the asbot which is the best one for accumulation and distribution phase and that's the classic bot which is perfect for the advancing all right and Depending on the configuration that you, I mean the strategy that you choose There are different configurations. All right, so 
for example, if you expect the the price to move within the range of, let's say, here it's around 20%, right? So this is where you can plot 20 grid levels to ensure that the grid profit is around 1%, all right? If you want to achieve the highest frequency trading rate, then, of course, increase the amount of grid levels. But as you increase the amount of grid levels, the uh, grid profit diminishes. Okay, but still, like it offsets the fact that you now have more grid levels, it makes up still a decent return in the long and mid term perspective. So, it's, it's really up to you to decide that whether you want to stick with the one percent. I mean, whether you want to stick with the uh, grid step configuration or the grid levels configuration. So if your aim is to get 1% from the market, then you say it's for this configuration that's 24 grid levels, okay? But if you want to make sure that the vast majority of your grid levels are being triggered by the price, then you need to increase the amount of grid levels, but by doing this you decrease the profit per grid because now the gap between your levels is decreased so as a general rule of thumb i would really recommend you to stick with this uh, rule just estimate the volatility of your range you see 45 so that means for this one it's going to be around 35 grid levels an optimal amount to achieve around one percent of a return per each trade execution okay of course there are also other strategies that you can use and that's why we have the demo mode here you see that's the one I have here all the active strategies they are in the demo mode so that's basically risk-free virtual money that you have to uh, to experiment with to discover and develop your own like best trading strategies that work only for you and by the way you can always share the results with your friends or if you want to monetize on your brand then you always can share your results with your community that will basically follow your trading setup okay that's another cool thing that we have and yeah that's the sandbox for you to experiment we have the backtest tool to stretch to sorry <laughs> to stress test any strategy that you're up to and you can compare different strategies with one another you can actually launch several bots on one crypto and here is the trick so since you can only launch one bot per uh, crypto pair so for example for BTC to USDT you can launch only one bot but here is the trick if you want to trade Bitcoin to the stable coin you can trade it to TUSD, for example. So that's going to be the second strategy on the same crypto pair, pretty much. You can stick with the uh, BUSD, which is the Binance USD coin. So you see, it's a trick for you. Just it's just that the stable coin varies, but still you are trading Bitcoin to US dollar, right? And that's how you can trick the system and have several different strategies on one cryptocurrency pair. So you can simultaneously launch three strategies on one pair. The difference is only in the stablecoin. And to compare your configurations, like the, the performance of each configuration as they are trading every day. And that's why you have the tool here, analytics, to see which configuration works the best. You see here the daily, like the actually hourly, no, that's the daily return here. So you see that's pretty much the average that you can expect is around this amount. And now you will, let's say that's another configuration on the same crypto. You open it and you look at the daily performance and you compare this daily performance with the one you had before, like on another strategy. So yeah, that's the, the path for you to follow to analyze your performance okay you can compare them 
And you can analyze your past trades as well over here. These are my past trades. So you can see what are your best strategies. Like you see top winners and you see your top losers. So analyze your top losers to support like the key mistake you made. Maybe you were wrong about the price direction you just Maybe you were wrong that you forgot to stick with the trading up on. Maybe you were wrong that you forgot to plot a stop loss. So you can analyze everything right here. So you see? That's one I closed at the market price. And for that one, I believe I did not have the stop loss. You see? No stop loss for this configuration. So that was my mistake. That's why that's minus 22%. I actually never let the bot to follow it at that point. But since this is my demo account, these are all sample trades. And I used to demonstrate all of these bad trades that you should avoid to show you that at least stick with the stop loss to ensure that you never reach a, ret a loss of like this, minus 27%. So yeah, once again, you have everything at your disposal, like all the tools, backtesting, Demo mode, which is a risk-free trading simulation. You have uh, you have uh, risk management tools like the stop loss, break even, exit in case of the change is negative. So everything at your disposal to make sure that you maximize your returns and you secure your profits and limit the risk. So what is, I see the, the question here, what is change percentage? So once again, that's the investment change, okay? So that's the key metric that you should monitor. That's the only one that should interest you. You see 30%, that's 30% up to my initial investment here. So that's the point A, and now my point B is basically up by 30%, okay? It can be that, uh, your investment change is lower when the bot profit, for example, like you see here for you, my, my investment change is 22%, but the bot profit is 33%. How come that this is like this? It's that because even though it's been trading for me and generating returns, you see now it's falling, okay? So the, the profit generated before on this rally over here, it offset the negative change of the base currency as it started to fall from that higher high and you see it started to fall so that's why my investment change like that is 22 percent okay so once again the bot profit is always positive because it extracts returns from the market even on the falling on the sideways and on, on the rising market all phases but we always have uh, base currency in active strategy and that means that we are exposed to the volatility of this base currency which can fall intraday or it can rise intraday so that's why you see here the bot generated returns but after that point over here it started to fall and that's why the investment change is lower than the bot profit generated so once again that's the key metric for you to monitor as far as, far as it's in the positive area as far as it's green you are doing fine here, okay? In case it's in the red zone, then you have five exit strategies to consider. Yeah, actually you can watch previous webcasts that I hosted. They are um, on the YouTube for you. And in the description of this webcast, you can find some other useful links like the one which will redirect you to the uh, guide I made like four months ago, as far as I recall. So this guide will provide you with tips and tricks on how to quickly launch the bot. It's just a five minute, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, five minute video. There are also articles that I have for you in our blog, which you can also read and where you will find some uh, s uh, configurations, the step-by-step -step configurations to follow let me just show you so you go to read scap you open the 
about here, you go to block and you go to analytics and here I have automated strategies. Yeah, this one for example. So you will find the exact configurations to follow. For example, once you spot this pattern, here is the explanation how to trade it. The best price to enter, the best price to exit and where to to set your stop loss. Okay? So everything guys is here for you if you are unexperienced if you are a beginner and you will find these articles very useful for sure and even if you are an experienced trader you can use this article to basically trade new ideas like to find new configurations that you've never used before but you can try them out so you can always trade them in the demo mode to to experiment before risking your real money okay so yeah that's actually it for for today so we covered market phases strategies that we have the s bot the classic bot the uh the general rule that you can follow to set the best amount of grid levels we also uh, covered all of the exit strategies that we have and how you can use the backtest tool to stress test any configuration, how you can launch simultaneously different configurations on one cryptocurrency pair, like taking advantage of the trick of the stablecoin, because once again, you have Bitcoin trading to USDT, which is pretty much the same as Bitcoin trading to USDT, right? And the same as trading to BUSD. So that's the trick that you can use to launch simultaneously different strategies on one cryptocurrency pair. And in the next webcast, I think I will focus more on uh, other strategies, like configurations that you can use on the sideways and rising markets. And I think that I will also cover the topic of volatility in depth. So how to basically generate trade ideas and basically how to create your own basket of cryptocurrencies to follow based on your risk appetite and investment objectives. So that's actually it for today. I appreciate your time and thanks a lot for being with me today. It was a pleasure as always and I hope you enjoyed. Please feel free to leave your honest feedback, suggestions and uh, questions if you have some unanswered then you can always ask them here you can also uh, ask them in the in telegram community that we have so we have the uh, support for you to make sure you always get an in-depth answer to make your trading effective okay and easy so yeah, see you next week, hopefully. And uh, if you want to educate yourself more, then once again, we have the blog and we have the YouTube channel with previous webcasts and some video guides for you to explore automation more in depth.